So I don't know if you're just kicking the tires on this whole schooly thing or if you're really serious about it, but I uh, just wanted to share with you guys what tools that we use and uh, the ones that we've used so far and the ones that we continue to use every day that we work on the bus. And it's, uh, it's coming along and we're super excited. We're getting ready to start building it out anytime now and uh, we're almost there. Welcome to the Bust to Move YouTube channel. My name is William, and I own Bust to Move along with my wife Victoria and our dog Miko and Muñeca. And today I'd like to talk to you about the tools that we've used so far with the build. At this point, at this, this recording, you're looking at the bus behind us. We have all the sheet metal up. We have the roof raised, and we are working on uh, getting it done. So we're uh, we're almost done with all of the outer construction and all of the structure. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to start the actual build of our tiny house inside this big metal box. So it's it's really exciting. We're at a really cool point, and. Uh, so I take this time to go ahead and shoot a quick thing to, uh, to show the tools that we've used so far. These are tools that I would say are invaluable for this type of work and honestly a few of them I can't imagine us getting to the point that we've gotten to without using them. They range from power tools to pneumatic tools to some hand tools. A lot of them are cheap. You can pick them up at Harbor Freight or uh, some of the clamps we bought at Walmart. So uh, it's, it's pretty cool. First of all, if you haven't ever tried to renovate a schoolie, you're going to need these guys. You don't know how loud it is until you start working. It's loud because it's all metal and you got a lot of power tools going. We have a fan running in here, so it's really loud. And uh, I actually happen to make a living using my ears. So I, uh, doing sound and as a musician and things like that, uh, ears are important. So definitely get you a good set of earmuffs. I actually run uh, the stick in foam kind uh, and then this over the top of that because I'm super particular about my hearing and about my ears, and it's it's something that you gotta have. So these guys, in uh, almost every picture, every video that you see of me inside this bus working, it's gonna be these all day. You use your eyes and ears a whole lot, so it's, it's really a great idea to protect both. So every time we're cutting anything, you'll see us using this guy. This is the actual mask used in the making of Bus to Move. And it's about time to retire it. It has scratches and things all over it, which is a testament to why you need it to begin with, because every scratch here equals a chance that you could have lost an eye. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I prefer to have both of mine. We've used these magnetic clamps for just about every step of the way. It's, uh, it's cool to put these on the wall and uh, just use a hammer, like put a hammer like in it or a screwdriver or something like that. That's cool. We used them when we were welding up the frames for our cargo area that we're custom building for the bottom. These also were very, very handy when we were putting the sheet metal on the sides. You could kind of just stick her up there and, uh, and just kind of cut down on the manpower that we needed because we had these. We just have these everywhere. So it's a super amazing purchase. And I cannot stress enough, you gotta have clamps. We have clamped just about everything here. I really can't think of a job that we've done so far where these weren't a game changer. I just can't say enough about them. If you've never seen these, they have them everywhere. Uh, everywhere that you can get any tool, you can get these guys. Uh, actual welding clamps like this, vice grips, uh, just the squeeze, springy, uh, A clamps, like those. You can just never have too many clamps. We happen to have about 15 on this bus, on this project, and I would love to have at least 15 more. Because it's every time we uh, get to any phase of this, it just kind of seems like we always need one more. And we've, we've gone back to purchase a few more, and I have some old rusty ones that my dad has had in his barn and my granddad has had in our barn all of my life, but we still had to buy more. And uh, it's just a big project, so clamps all day. You know, you can get the, the good guys, the cool ones for, uh, <laughs> I think they're like 40 bucks a piece, but this one in particular I bought at Walmart. If you go in the tool department at Walmart, they're $5. I went to Lowe's to pick a few more up and I realized that I had them for 40 and I'm like, I'm not going to spend $40 on this thing that I'm just going to dirty up with the welder and all of that, that stuff. So try trusty old Walmart and they, they had them and they were $5 and granted these are not the best, the $40 ones that I have are incredible. Uh, but for $5, it does the same job. It's a little more tedious, a little harder. 
to get set. I'm sure they won't last as long either, but it saves money, so well worth it. I don't know if you've ever used a hand squeeze pop rivet gun, but we have put back in, I don't know, I would say 200 rivets maybe, and if you've ever done the clamp where you squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and then it breaks off, you know how tedious that would be to do a handful, but to do 200, it's just insane. So we got this guy. We picked him up at Harbor Freight for uh, I think $69, and they, you put the, uh, the air hose in there, rivets go in here, and it uh, has this little catch guy in the back where uh, the stems usually wind up, and uh, although there's a slot in it, so they keep coming out, and we had to tape the back because they were kind of hitting us in the eye, and uh, wasn't super pleasant, so. But we've got this guy, and you put it up there, squeeze, pss, it does it for you, and it's absolutely awesome. So, if you're in the market to build a schoolie, and you know you're gonna do sheet metal, pneumatic rivet gun, 100%. We have three of these puppies on the project of all varying brands and things like that, but we have three four and a half inch angle grinders. And we've done everything from sanding wheels to cutoff wheels to grinding wheels. You just gotta do it, man. From cutting the supports that ultimately hold up the roof after the roof raise to cutting the sheet metal that goes on the side. We had to miter a couple of corners and things and make some style lines to match the back. Um, something like this, you gotta have it. Um, we had gotten a few other things that we thought were gonna cut it, like uh, my dad found a circular saw that specifically cuts sheet metal or metal in general. And it was just kind of tearing into our sheet metal and doing crazy like burrs and things. It just wasn't a smooth cut. So we went back to this this guy and uh, and it's two brothers that we have. Depending on what time of day, what, uh, what weekend we were in, you'll see us have about three of these. And these things have helped us cut all sorts of metal. We've developed a system. I say we developed it, but we we figured it out. I don't know if other people have done it or not, but when our screws were stripped out, we were able to cut a slice in them and, uh, and use a flathead screwdriver to back them out and saved us a lot of time in the long run from grinding a lot of stuff. Stripped no more. It was just a good thing. It was a cool thing to have these fellas there. Gloves. You just can't ever have enough gloves. We have gone through many, many, many gloves. There's just a lot of sharp edges, a lot of, a lot of dirty stuff. It's just nice to have a lot of gloves, and we have multiple sets that have been ripped into with uh, angle grinders, and uh, the welder burns quite a lot into the gloves, and uh, it's just not a good idea to do things with bare skin exposed. Just gotta get gloves, man. Gloves are your friend. A tool that I had never used before, before doing this job, uh, an oscillating multi-tool. It's obnoxious. It's a terrible, terrible sound, but this guy right here was instrumental in uh, especially getting our rubber floor removed. I know that's a, a big thing that a lot of people struggle with, and we were able to make pretty light work of it. I mean, it, took, it still took most of the afternoon, but we were able to get all 30, eight or so feet of the bus, completely stripped and down to the bare metal using this guy. A lot of patience, a lot of work, but uh, absolutely couldn't have done it without this, and you gotta have it. Aside from that, you have your levels, hammers, caulking guns, uh, what else have you used a lot of? You know what, the lights. You can never have enough lights. We got some LED shop light tubes and we have them hanging up everywhere. And it's really come in handy for times like nighttime working and things like that. If you're working late into the night, it's just hard when you can't see. So lights, 100%, you gotta get lights. And a lot of people use their lights in their bus. They don't unwire them. And uh, it just turns into some craziness when the battery dies and you have to jump it off. And it's just bad for the batteries. It's bad for everything. So get some lights that can plug in, put them up out of the way if, if that's possible. 
we love being a part of the community here on YouTube as Bust and Move, and we'd like for you to be a little part of our community. So if you wouldn't mind, click the subscribe button. You'll get notified every time that we upload another video. If you like this video in particular, I'd like to invite you to like this video. Just click the little like button. It'll help us get registered in the, uh, in the search results and things like that, and uh, it'll help other people like you or like us find us. And uh, we're just excited to be here. So thanks a lot for, uh, for joining us on the video. We'll see you next time.